the common My name is Michel Bowens. We're at the Commons and Economics Conference in Berlin, May 22 to 24. And I will ask my friends here uh, first to say who they are. The context is a um, discussion about money and the commons. Can we consider money not as a commodity but as a commons? Um, uh, tell hi, me who you are. Yeah, I'm Nicolas Mendoza from Colombia. Uh, I've been working for the past few couple of years with P2P Foundation and I'm currently a PhD candidate at City University in Hong Kong. And you're involved in the Bitcoin community, right? Yes, I've been involved in Bitcoin community since 2011. And, and, yes. and yeah, collaborate with Bitcoin Magazine as well. Okay, and Jim, what about you? Um, yeah, I'm Jim Bendel. I'm a professor of sustainability leadership and a director of the Institute for Leadership and Sustainability in the UK. And one of our main research programs and also uh, teaching and training programs is on uh, the whole field of complementary currencies. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, my name is Michel Bounds, uh, P2P Foundation. I'm also at the uh, Common Strategies Groups, which is one of the co-organizers of this event. Uh, Matthew? I'm Matthew Slater. I co-founded Community Forge and we give software to communities who are working with their own currencies. Ich bin Martin Auer. Und ich bin von der Freikoin Community und wir versuchen eine soziale Lösung für das mit dem Bitcoin Protokoll zu erreichen. Thank you. Um, so let me maybe kind of give a bit of a framing. Um, so basically the idea for me of money as a comment is uh, twofold. So money to do is money today is created either by the government, the state, or actually most of the money is created by um, debt creation through the banks. And so the idea of money as a commons is actually of uh, can we have a money that is socially created, that is socially sovereign as it were. And then the second aspect that I see money as a commons is money not as a commodity that is bought and sold in the market and that some of the people have a lot of it and then most of the people have uh, not enough of it. Um, so those for me is a framing of money as a commons but I would like, for example, Jem, do you have a perspective on money as a commons? Yes, I think the first thing to really understand is that the, the dominant monetary system we have in nearly every country of the world right now uh, is one that is designed to be anti-commons. If we rely on, or for all our transactions now, uh, money issued as debt with interest, this means we have a system now where there is more debt than money and the only way this system can not collapse is if more and more loans are issued uh, because we need to service these debts. This creates an imperative to turn more of life, more of, of nature, uh, more of the, uh, the radio waves, everything into commodities from which someone can profit in order to service a debt. And if that debt isn't serviced, then basically we have a contraction in money supply, we have recession, we have depression. So we have this inbuilt logic for commodification and enclosure of the commons. So for those of us who are interested in the, the, the role of the commons in providing well-being and even just survival, if we look at what's happening with, with, with the planet, then we have to ask serious questions about our dominant monetary system and think about how we can have currencies that are actually supportive of the commons or even currencies which uh, actually restore the commons of our own ability to issue credits to each other. Okay, that's very interesting. So what I, what I will ask first is uh, the other participants to explain their own answer to this question. So can we imagine alternative currency forms that are more commons friendly? And so we'll ask Nicolas to talk about Bitcoin I will ask you to talk about Community Forge and you about Frycoin and how, what is your specific proposed solution. And then maybe you, Jim, after that, you can tell us if, if anything is missing in the picture that we hear. I'm sure there will be no, nothing missing okay. with this we'll stellar cast. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so I, so I think that there is, there is the, the point uh, when it comes to Bitcoin. 
to understand the uh, to understand its relation to the commons. Yeah, maybe yeah. first tell us what Bitcoin is because maybe the public will. Oh my God! Not know. <laughs> you know, in a short way. Yeah, just to give the uh, basic it's a, idea. It's a monetary system um, that is driven through a distributed open source protocol over the internet um, that allows people to produce the money and hold the money and uh, transact with the money. So it's a whole fully uh, consistent, uh, complete monetary system that has all the functions of the current monetary system. But it does it in a distributed way. And as you said, debt free. It's not money that it's produced through the creation of debt. Uh, I think that when it comes to the commons, the interesting and the, like the key thing about Bitcoin, I think, is its property as a protocol. It's as an open source protocol. So by the very uh, act of publishing the protocol online, other variations of the of the of the protocol have been created, like Fricoin and other coins. So in itself, the 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 open sourceness of the protocol. Uh, was released to the world. Yes, and that's, so a has, that's, yeah. that's a common. That's itself, a common right? in yes. itself. Uh, so that's the first thing. But then the users of this particular version of the protocol uh, coalesce around it. And it, it has allowed a lot of creativity to go into the system and it has allowed um, a lot of experimentation and a lot of new people uh, to try different things. And I think that a lot of people have been empowered. To, to do many things through yes. through their yes. relations. And to the I would also say that Bitcoin, more than anything else, has you know actually opened up discussion about money, which was like a really minority discussion. Mm. And now yeah. everybody knows that it's possible, and so now everybody's talking about different uh, currencies and it scales globally. I think is an important factor. I, I even yeah. have to yeah. name some of my presentations now beyond Bitcoin. Because people yeah. are asking me to tell them about Bitcoin, so I, I, that's where the door is opening, and then yeah. you can talk more generally about the fact that we can design currencies ourselves, and yeah. then you can have discussions about what kind of currency design will serve what social purpose. Okay, great. But it's definitely done. Yeah, done that. Open the yeah. yeah. So Matthew, what about um, what you are doing with Community Forge? Is how is that related? So I want to be clear that Community Forge is not uh, issuing currencies not even very much designing currencies. We're offering the software for independent community groups to run their own currencies and uh, offering them consultancy and advice uh, for the design. But the model we like to... So you're like an enabler. An enabler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we want to see a million flowers bloom in terms of currency experiments. The, the design that I favor and that uh, my software is built around is a mutual credit design, which means that instead of a central bank uh, or a commercial bank issuing credit and validating credit that's guaranteed by the government um, so that it, in case of a default it will always be uh, matched by authority, instead of that the users of the currency and the members of the community the producers and the consumers issue the credit to each other and in case of a default they manage it themselves by uh, collecting into a, a pool or something. And so this is very much more democratic because the, uh, the currency is issued to do the things that the community wants to do and the, the monetary system reflects the values of the community instead of reflecting the values of a national government or a, uh, a multinational corporation. Okay, thank you. Um, any specific commons aspect that you want to comment on? As well, it's the credit commons. All right. uh, Thomas Greco is talking about this. At the moment, uh, you could say that uh, the credit commons has been privatized uh, or enclosed by the uh, central banking monopoly or cartel uh, so that only they have the right to issue credit. Okay. Uh, and what happens in the local mutual credit systems is that anyone can issue credit. Okay, thank you. So what about Frycoin? Um, Frycoin is um, a copy of Bitcoin which tries to make Bitcoin to a social 
uh, way. And um, with Freikon, we try to solve this problem that in the beginning of Bitcoin, um, the most Bitcoins are owned from, you heard about today, 17 people round about. So we thought about, okay, let's make a clone of Bitcoin and make it in a more social way and build in a demurrage so that also in the long run uh, the money could not be hoarded. So it's redistributed to the community. And for this redistribution up to now it um, goes to the people which provide Freikon with the um, capacity of the computers to support this network. And also we are now working on an algorithm how we can solve the problem that we can vote, for example, which social projects we want to support. We want to um, support, for example, communities or free land, and there are other projects like Silvio Gesa said, for example, it could be good to have a basic income for mothers, or the uh, free land area of Silvio Gesa could be also a possibility to support such projects. And, and now we are working on an algorithm how to solve this problem, uh, this which projects uh, to support in a most decentralized way. And because it's, uh, this algorithm is not so easy to realize, uh, we started with um, Freikon already at the end of last year. And everybody is welcome to participate and also to help to develop this algorithm so that we can have a decentralized uh, voting system for supporting of social projects and comments and generally. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I'm not sure people uh, who listen to us know what demurrage means. Maybe, mm -hmm. Jem, you, can you explain? Um, Demirage, yeah, it's a fantastic word, isn't it? The, it comes from the idea that, that money, because money can get you anything, because money doesn't rust or go off, people uh, like money more than real wealth, real life. Uh, and so how do you design money in a way which will make it rust or make it go off so people don't become <laughs> obsessed with money? And so you, you add a negative interest rate so, or, or, or some kind of fee so you have to pay in order to keep your money fresh. And so that, as, as, as you say, means it works against this idea of, of, of hoarding. It promotes circulation. So it means that if you've got money, it's a means of exchange. Uh, you you want to spend it, uh, and you want to help you know make the the economy move. So that's my understanding of demurrage. And so Frycoin, I think, is a is a, a fantastic concept of taking the the, the open source, the the, the, the the commons software created by Bitcoin, and and thinking how can we apply that in a way which builds on history and analysis of what is good currency design. Uh, it's early days for Frycoin. It's going to be a, 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 quite a challenge, I think, to, to get it adopted because you, unlike Bitcoin, there's not that speculative aspect to it in the same way. People can't just hold on to it uh, because the purpose of it is to spend it. So you need a lot of people to adopt it quickly in order to create real uh, communities doing business with each other. So it's, it, it, it needs to have all those social components that you're, you, you're clearly looking at. Okay, yes. Yes, um, up to now, um, the market capability of Falcon is already $800,000, so you, you don't need, um, there are exchanges already there for Falcon, so you have already something we can do with this currency because mm -hmm. we have this currency in itself has a value. And our main goal is also to um, that you can donate to projects. And now we build on a platform which you can put your project in and then you can donate some money, and we, um, and then the goal is that, the, um, that this project uh, give some fry coins uh, to be extra supported. Mm. So uh, the first thing uh, we want really a uh, decentralized um, donation platform to build in and to support projects with mm -hmm. this. Okay, thank you. Well, s so far we, we've been talking about um, designing money so that it's favorable for commons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we live in a world where everything is being, as you said, because the money is not Current money is not commons friendly. Everything is being monetized more and more. Mm -hmm. But isn't there another option, which is not to have a different kind of money, but have no money at all? So we have here one of the streams, uh, one of the parts of the discussion is people who favor demonetization. Mm -hmm. So any perspectives on that? And Matthew, you, you talk about the gift economy. Is that part of that uh, well, it vision? Could be, uh, if people were giving sufficiently uh, and not keeping accounts, money would take on a very different function. There's a function of money that uh, enables a very high level of organization, 
but that's not money as a commodity, that's money as an accounting unit. And it's very, very useful for large projects. Mm. Right. And yes, yes, well, according to David Graeber, the anthropologist, he argues that, uh, that money was really only used to deal with external, people external to the community, like in 5,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so internally in the community there was no need for such a thing, but it was a, a, a way to, to, yeah, to uh, handle trust, to manage trust with someone you were likely never going to see again. So in that sense, uh, uh, we, we could think about like demonetization internally in communities. Yeah. Yes. And that could apply to local communities, but maybe also to global affinity communities yeah. that internally could organize themselves. Uh, I think the term is resource-based economics, right, Jim? Is mm. that one of the terms that is used? Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting discussion here that, that is coming up in, in this conference. But I think before we talk about demonetizing uh, and the role of the gift economy and how to promote that, I think we, we do need to be clear that there is a, a currency design which is of the commons, and that's not to treat money as commodity. Oh is that your... <laughs> okay. Someone obviously watching, calling in live. Are we, are we, is, are, are we, are we on? to say something. Yeah, maybe. Is there a question here? Um, that the, the, we... The, the key thing we need to do is, is help restore the credit commons and provide opportunities for communities and business networks to monetize the value that they already have. Uh, and the problem I see then with the commodity currencies or the ones that behave like that, <coughs> and so Bitcoin and Frycoin, as far as I'm aware, are like that, is that the, 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 the credit creation process is, is the people are not being enabled to create a sufficient amount of ex uh, means of exchange uh, and so we still have a lot of work to do on that to restore the credit commons mm. so that's a big issue the next issue which is what you brought up Michelle is about then well can we also demonetize more of our lives uh, and I think we can't unless we move to more communal ways of, of living but also in many com intentional communities um, and also in cooperatives, you find that you need systems of keeping score. Because otherwise, you have some people yeah. who feel like someone's not pulling their weight. Right, and this is so, money as accounting. So, yeah, yeah so, so, so money as, as accounting. And so any, any social housing or communal housing I've been in has had rotors and meetings. Uh, and <coughs> it's, it's, you perhaps need some of that in order yeah. to, to help people realize who's, who's doing what and who's contributing to the community. And this can be a form of currency. It can be a reputational currency or a system of thank yous. Um, so, so is that demonetizing? Yes, but it also is using innovative understandings yes. of currency. Well, just to say uh, one thing myself, I see a lot of potential in uh, open accounting <coughs> and open supply chains as actually means to coordinate um, production activities outside of the monetary system. Okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. see. there isn't a need to actually get rid of money to do that. You can have accounting systems to do that, or you can have yeah. other systems, whatever is appropriate and whatever people want. Okay. When we talk about demonetization, for me, it's about getting rid of the idea that we need to be shifting large amounts of commodity value around in order to settle the debts between us. Yes. Um, this is what you were saying mm. about. Um, in the old days, people would move gold between the city-states and they would settle those debts with the gold. But within the city-states, they would issue worthless coins, uh, the city government would. And uh, so the debts between the people in the community would be settled just by worthless tokens. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we are coming close to the end of the conversation. Um, I have a question maybe to Jem and uh, short answer. Um, is there any role for the government um, in terms of new forms of money? Um, yes, definitely uh, at two levels. The, the first level is for the government to uh, address this uh, 
completely unsustainable monetary system that we have through total whole-scale monetary reform uh, and so restoring the ability of government to issue its own money for its own purposes rather than raise that money on the bond markets uh, and to wind down the current non-reserve or fractional reserve banking system so that banks aren't creating the, the majority of our means of exchange for their own profit and to who they choose to, to, to lend to. Uh, we need, as in, the, in the same way Matthew said as well, we need to democratise that whole process of credit creation so who gets the money reflects what society wants, not what banks want. So there's a national monetary reform agenda which is very allied to this idea of, of supporting the commons. Yes. But there's a second thing to do which doesn't require that big, big huge political campaign and that's at city level or local governments. Uh, there are innovative local governments around the world now who are saying well we've got really difficult financial situation, we want to provide lots of social services but we don't want to tax our local people that much, we don't want to borrow and the government's cut, the central government's cutting our budgets so why not issue our own almost like vouchers to pay people to do good local works and then take that back out of circulation mm -hmm. through charging that in tax. Uh, there are some really fascinating examples okay. and some great proposals as well around how to scale that. Okay. And I think also this, when we're doing that, we should remember that cities in the past have done this and done this successfully. Thank <laughs> you.